Hello everyone, it is Trish from Handmade by Trish and welcome to the basics to heat embossing. Um, I'm doing this video particularly for Michelle um, but thought I would post it anyway so that anyone who hasn't done heat embossing before and wants to learn the basics, this will be the video for you. Um, so you do need a few basic tools for heat embossing. Um, but you don't need as many as people might lead you to believe. <laughs> there's only a very few basic colours that you actually need. I mean, there's so many embossing um, powders out there in the market. I've got quite a few different sorts here. This one's heated up. This one's paper mania. You probably can't see it with the black and the black. Um, this is wow. And each of these brands have got ones with sparkles in, thick grains, thin, fine grains. But I just find the normal embossing powders are absolutely fine. So um, oh, I've also got some stamping up ones too. These are some metallic ones. Um, you can also get something that you use in exactly the same way as the embossing powder called sticky embossing powder um, and I'll show you something that we can do with that later on. You do need to have a, um, a sticky ink. So um, Versamark is the one I use and it, it, it is the most probably widely used for embossing. There's another one and I think Michelle I left this for you when I left the UK. It'll be in a bottle similar to this. This is actually stays on cleaner but it's in this type of bottle with a, a dauber on it and I think it might actually be called embossing ink actually. It might be called that and you literally just dab that onto your stamp and that's how you ink your stamp and you use that. So basically you want a sticky ink, something that's not going to dry really quickly. So Typically your dye inks and the, the stamping up inks that I use are dye inks and they dry really quickly. As soon as you stamp them on the paper they're pretty much dry and that's not what you want when you're embossing because you do need the powder to actually stick to what it is you've stamped. But I'm going to show you a way that you can use your dye inks to get any colour embossing you want. So here we've got clear, we've got white and we've got black but with these very basic um, supplies, really with this clear you can use any colour to, do, to emboss with and I'll, I'll show you how we'll do that in a minute. Um, if you're going to use your dye inks and do the method I show you in a minute you will need something like, you will need a stamp positioning tool. My preferred one is the Stamparatus but there's lots of stamp positioning tools out on the market. So just to go through what we need, we need some Versamark ink or sticky ink. Um, I'm going to show you something with this really crappy white, but um, we'll go on to that in a bit. You need a heat gun. Now, um, this one I use for videos because it's nice and quiet, but it's not very powerful. It's got a very low, um, I say a low heat, it does get very hot, but... Um, it's quite a, a slow blow. Um, this is my stamping up one, and this is really good. This has got two speeds. Um, it is very loud though, so I don't tend to use this one on camera, but it is a bit quicker than the other one because it does have a, a high speed and a low speed, so it's quite useful for that. Um, you'll need some stamps and a stamping block to stamp them with. This is some what we call an embossing buddy, and I'll, I'll tell you the benefits of that in a minute. You need some embossing inks. I've got some paper and um, I've actually put some notes on this because I'm going to try different techniques and I just want to remember which was which so I've put some little notes on it. Um, so I'm just going to put these to one side. Oh and you'll need a little bit of scrap paper. This is just um, I got mailed something that was on an A4 piece of paper and I've just torn off half because you you don't need too big a piece of paper. I guess it depends on the size of whatever it is that you're embossing. So um, I'm going to first show you a very basic, very basic embossing. To get started, and I've just dropped my little scraps of paper. Um, so I've got some white scrap here, and I'm just going to do a sentiment on that. So we need our heat tool, we need our embossing ink, just pop that to one side for a minute. Okay, so on my bit of paper I am going to use the happy birthday sentiment out of here. I'm just going to um, stamp it with my Versamark ink and I'm going to use the black embossing powder. So you actually don't need to have any coloured ink if you were doing this. 
um, because you can use the embossing colours to be your ink. I am going to use my Stamparatus for this only because I actually prefer when I'm doing embossing to so that it's really juicy. I actually prefer to stamp everything twice. Probably don't need to. Well, I know I don't need to because I never used to do it twice. I just used to do it once. But um, since having a tool like this, it's so easy to stamp it a second time. And that way you're just guaranteed that you're always going to get a good coverage. So I'm going to pick up my stamp on my... Um, I don't need the foam bit under that. Um, on my Stamparatus. So I've just got my stamp on there. I'm going to use my sticky ink. Now, because this ink is clear, this Versamark ink has no colour, it might be a little bit difficult to see exactly what's going on, but I'll try and hold it up for you. So I'm just going to stamp. Now, that one stamp is probably sufficient, and I just used to stamp it once when I first started embossing. Um, and let's hold it up to the light. I don't know if you can see. Oh, you can see it a little bit. Um, oh, it went in. Can. So it's just very clear. So um, I'm just going to stamp that up again. I mean, that was plenty juicy enough. I don't need to stamp it up again, but it's a habit I've got into when I'm embossing. I just like to make sure it's nice and wet and, and juicy. Right, so I'm just going to put that Stamparatus to one side. Then I'm going to get my scrap paper and get my embossing powder. I'm going to use the black embossing powder. So I've not used any black ink on here at all, although I could. Um, and I'm just going to pour that ink or that embossing powder over the stamped image and then tap it off and there's something i forgot to do which i'll show you in a minute so see how there's these little black spots here this is what i should have used my embossing buddy for and i'll do it again in a minute so you can see but um where it's on the edges it's easy to just clear it away um when i get it in here the trick i do for that is to get a paintbrush and i'm just going to grab one A paintbrush out of here and there's a way that you can just um, sort of clear off any odd bits especially when you've got something so dark or if you've got the white embossing powder on black it's really obvious if it was a pale color you may not even notice it but when you've got black on white or white on black then you do notice it so just with the paintbrush I just um, Go really up to the bit that's actually in the way that I want to get rid of. And you can just knock it away. Because it's not on there with the embossing ink, it's just kind of clinging to the paper. It comes away really easily. Um, let's just get that little bit there. You might need to just give it a tap. A little bit there. You don't want to blow on it because what you don't want to do is blow the powder off where you do want it. So I'm quite happy with that now. So that can stay like that for ages. I don't need to heat it for a while if I don't want to, but I'm going to so I can show you the next step. But um, once you've put the embossing powder on, it's fine. Obviously, once you've stamped it, you want to get the embossing powder on it before the ink dries. And if you use a sticky ink like Versamark, then it will stay sticky for quite a while. So you could stamp a few images before you then put your embossing powder on. I always, once I've tipped it back into the bottle, I always put the lid back on the bottle because that just powder just gets everywhere. Um, right, so the best way to um, use your heat tool is to actually heat it first before you put it to the paper. So I'm just going to get this warm and then bring it to the paper. Now, when you heat paper, it's the same really. When you wet paper, it will warp a little bit. And what I find is as you heat it, it kind of curls a little bit towards you. And if it gets a little bit too curly and you're not happy with it, if you just heat it from the back and it should curl back the other way. You don't need to hold it really, really close. And I do just gently keep it moving. 
because I don't want to burn or scorch anything and you can scorch embossing powder if you heat it too much for too long but you will start to see hopefully soon as I say this heat tool is not as efficient as my other one but see you'll start to see where it's gone shiny you'll see it change from that matte finish of just the powder on it to the powder melting and becoming a very glossy image a little bit going over now that's hot that's kind of melted plastic essentially so don't touch it straight away it does dry really quickly and actually now I can see some little spots that I could have got rid of so that'd be all right to touch now it, it cools really quickly but initially it's hot and it's wet because it's kind of melted so I wouldn't touch it straight away after you've done it but so that's that's one I'm just going to do it on the other side and show you correctly this time since I failed to use the embossing belly on the first attempt leave all these paint brushes right so if I bring my stamp back in, and I'll just do it on the other other end of the paper. Okay, so we'll ink up the stamp. Let's just do it once this time, actually, and see what difference it makes. Probably makes none at all. And this is where I'd need to use the embossing buddy. And you just simply brush it over your paper. It's got a very, very, very fine powder in there, and it just leaves a very very fine I mean finer than baby powder we're talking really fine powder in there so once I've inked up my stamp and it's nice and wet we're going to stamp it on here I'm just going to go with the one stamping this time get my little bit of scrap paper get my black embossing powder again Tap it off. And I don't know if you can see now, but there's there's no speckles. A tiny bit there, probably where my finger went. Um, there aren't the speckles left that we had on the other side. You can see these little speckles on here. But there doesn't appear to be any on that. So before I heat it, I'm just going to put the excess back in here. And I tell you, a tub of this will last you for ages and ages and ages. Right, let's just get that heat going again. And let's just start heating the embossing powder. Hopefully you can see that changing. The first time you do this, you'll just go, wow. Because it's just amazing to watch how it goes from this matte to this really shiny, vibrant colour. Okay. So just give it a second to cool. And then I can touch that again now. So, um, yeah, they're my happy birthday sentiments, black on white. Um, so, I've got here, if I put that to one, oh, I need that scrap, if I just put that to one side. So, um, on here, I wanted to show you different um, effects, essentially. I'm going to do a sentiment with white on those. But here I've got one called clear and one called black. So I'm going to use emboss I'm going to use black embossing powder on this one and I'm going to use clear embossing powder on this one. And I don't know if you're going to see the difference or not. 
you may not um, but it, it's an experiment let's say so I'm going to use the um, playful background stamp which I used the other day and I'm going to use this lot of bubbles here I just want to do it as a background so because it's black on black it is just literally going to give me like shiny spots so you'll be able to see it on the card but it, it won't be the main feature um, and because I'm using this stamp, I'm just going to use a block. I'm not going to use the Stamparatus. So I'm not going to stamp it several times. Just one stamping is going to be enough. I'm going to get, you kind of need two scraps of paper if you're going to be stamping off the edge of the paper. Because if you stamp off the edge with the Versamark and then use that to pour your embossing powder on, you're going to get embossing powder stick to your scrap as well. So let's go with the clear first. Let's find our clear embossing powder and um, our Versamark ink and cut my stamp. Make sure it's well inked if you're just going to do the one stamping. And I'm just going to randomly stamp this over my piece of paper. And I can get several of these on before that ink's going to dry. Um, and of course you can't see it at all on here while you're watching the video, but I'll hold it up later. You might be able to see a little bit of it. So I'm just popping this around the paper so that it will give me a background of bubbles. Now let's hold it up and see if in the light. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it on there. So when you're doing it yourself, you'll be able to see it. It's very hard on a camera. Okay, so clear embossing ink. Or powder, should I say. I haven't got very much of that left, so I'm just going to wriggle it around a bit. Make sure it covers the whole image. And I forgot again to use the embossing buddy. Keep doing that. So easy to forget it. And of course you remember it afterwards when you see all the little bits of embossing. Okay, so now you can see where that um, stamp went. And I can see some bits of embossing powder that I don't really want there. But because I didn't use the embossing buddy, I think I'm stuck with them. Unless I get the paintbrush out, but then we'll be here all day. Right, so um, let me just put my embossing powder back in its container. And that was just what I told you not to use, the scrap of paper that you used for stamping off. But... Right, so let's put that to one side. Let's bring little bits of powder everywhere. Let's bring this back. Heat up our heat gun. And we'll just slowly heat that. Now I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to use um, black embossing powder this time. And or the next time and see whether it makes a difference um, I don't know whether it will or not It'd be interesting to see because Versamark is a, is a watermarking so it's a bit like painting colour on colour so it might look very similar so I don't know if you can see that now but it's starting to change you can see where the clear is melting and it's giving you that shine and it's giving you because the embossing powder is clear it's giving you the colour underneath which is black Quite a quick process but you can watch it melt and you just want to make sure all the powders melted before you move on to another area it's starting to go So you can see I've got four stampings out before I put the powder on and yet it hasn't affected any of them. They've still clung on to that powder quite well. So that's the advantage of using a, a sticky ink. It takes a little longer to dry. So 
it'll hold on to that embossing powder for you. Okay. So that is using the clear embossing powder. Okay, so I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to use black embossing powder. So let's move that one away, put that one there. Um, got my black paper, got my scratch paper, and let's ink this one up. With the background like this, it doesn't matter if the stamped image doesn't come out really clear if I missed any bubbles or anything, because it is just literally going to be in the background. So it's not so much about the image in this one, because I'll be layering it with something else on top when I make it into something. Okay. So now I... Oh, and I didn't use the embossing buddy again. <laughs> I might get it right by the time we finish this. <laughs> right, I'm using um, my scrap and putting the black embossing powder on. I've got a bit more of this so I can be a little bit more liberal with this one. Because I didn't use that embossing buddy, I can see quite a few specks of black on here, which I ideally don't want, but not much I can do about that now. Let's just get this back in here. Now you can see I've got black bubbles, so let's heat that up. Your fingers might get really hot doing this, and I'm going to do a sentiment on a smaller bit soon, and I'll show you I just use a pair of tweezers to hold on to it. Give it a bit of heat from the back because it's curling a little. Oh, there we go. She's starting to melt. Hopefully you can see that changing on there. Just move it around a little. When you're working on a bigger piece like this, it's a little bit easier, but um, yeah, when I work on a smaller bit, you'll see I'll probably get the tweezers out. to me so let's have a look can you tell the difference so that's the one that's stamped black that's the one that's stamped clear do you think there's a difference I do actually this is terrible light in here but I kind of do think that is a bit blacker the black on black than the clear on black I think they'll make great backgrounds anyway. 
So, interesting experiment. I think the black on black does give you a nicer cover. But they both look good. So let's just put them to one side. Um, so let's do on the black this happy birthday. And this time I'm going to emboss it with white. Now I do have a white ink, which is also a pigment ink, which stays sticky. So quite a good one um, if you're using it for embossing. But you know, I don't think, I think that white ink is pretty rubbish. So I'm going to try it, but I actually think that I might end up just using the white embossing powder. And so if I'm stamping on black, I'll often use white embossing powder because that's essentially like stamping with white ink, but it, it gives you a, a much clearer and cleaner. Let's see if that'll fit on there, almost. Let's um, wash this stamp, just clean it because I need to move it. So if I just pick that up off there, let's pop that, let's say there. Now this time I am going to remember the embossing buddy. So we get the embossing buddy, just go over it lightly like so, and let's just put a really, really fine layer of powder on there. Um, here is my, so this is opaque bright white and opaque means it's not see-through so it's going to give you a really really good good coverage. I'm going to try stamping with this white ink but I'm, I'm not holding up a lot of hope for this. So it looks white when you put it on the stamp, it looks like it's going to be great but the last time I used it it was pretty rubbish and I ended up having to stamp it several times so I don't know, I think I might throw this away and get the stamping up one. Um, let's try this. The last time I did it on black, it just kind of soaked into the black and didn't give me any colour whatsoever. Which is pretty much what it's done again. You can barely tell that I've stamped on white. So I'm going to um, just clean my stamp off. And that's why I don't use that white very much. It's probably good if you're doing a... Um, a technique where you get those sort of white bubbly highlights because really it just lets so little colour on. So if I use the Versamark stamp that on there because I've used the stamp positioning tool it doesn't matter that I've had to stamp it again because it'll be in exactly the same place Pop that to one side. Pop my white embossing powder on there. And it looks like I've got a little bit of excess, not too much, but so I'm just going to get that paintbrush again. And just gently brush off where it shouldn't be sticking. And that Y, that actually looks like it's a little bit of hair there. I remember when I had the dogs, you'd occasionally get little bits of hair and actually that would make it look like it was... So the little bit of it was sticking to the embossing ink. Um, let's just get a little bit from the A. So especially when I'm doing white on black or black on white, I like to just tidy up these little specks because they will show up, especially this opaque white. It's not at all forgiving. The clear is a little bit more forgiving, but the black and the white, not so much. Right, so let's tidy up this. Now this time I am going to use my tweezers, if I can find what I did with them. There they are. 
And this just allows me to not have to have my fingers so close. Put a bit of pair of tweezers on that. Those fine tip ones are really good for picking up little pieces of um, like little sequins and stuff like that, but they're not so good when you're trying to grip something. These reverse tweezers are great for gripping stuff. So let's just hold that there, get the heat tool, warm it up. If you're using the other heat gun that's got the two speeds, if you have it on fast heat, you really don't want to start it off on fast heat because it can blow off your embossing powder. It's quite a strong blow. This one's really gentle. That's why it takes a little longer, but um, for the purposes of video, it's better. So hopefully you can see that changing, that white going nice and shiny and bright white now. You can do multiple, um, so now that I've heated that, I could put that back in my Stamparatus, ink it up with Versamark again, put another layer of embossing powder over it, and actually build up layers. I've done that before with butterflies and stuff like that, and it looks really cool. So that there is really great, that's come out really good, nice white on black, and really clear. So I, I was going to do one on white ink, but as you can see, the white ink is pretty rubbish, so I'm not going to do the other one. So that's that one. Then I was going to show you um, two other things. One about um, using the sticky stuff, but before we go on to the sticky stuff, um, I'm going to show you how you could use any colour ink pad. So in this case, I've chosen the Knight of Navy ink pad. I've got some soft sea foam um, cards card stock and i'm going to start out by stamping on here with just normal ink um i'm just going to stamp on the seaweed now i don't want to emboss the seaweed because the seaweed's not going to be the main feature i just want that to be in the background so i want it to be fairly subtle so i'm going to grab um, a piece of scrap grab a block suitable for this stamp and I'm actually going to use the same colour of the cardstock, which is soft sea foam. And I am going to stamp it with that. So it's going to be a bit more subtle. And in fact, actually, oh, I might do a couple of different generations so that I get different levels of colour. So when I call different generations, so I've got stamp it once. Second generation is stamping it twice. Third generation stamping it three times, but the second and third haven't really come out. So let's ink it up again. One, two. Are you barely seeing the, the second generation on here? Would work much better with a darker colour. So I've just wanted a bit of seaweed on there, just a little bit. Um, I may even, why not, go full out. And since I've got the bubbles here, let's add some bubbles too. Yeah, see, second generation's really pale, so I think I might just go with first generation here as well. You can barely see the second generation on there. So um, let's pop those stamps to one side. I'll clean them in a minute. Then what I want to do is I want to um, stamp my seahorse on here. The seahorse I'm getting out of the Seaside Notions stamp set. And here's my seahorse. And 
and I take that same block that I had before, put the seahorse on it, and barely fits. Now, this is where actually I don't want to, I want, need to use my stamparatus on this. So, this is where I'm using a normal ink, a, a dye based ink, but I want to emboss with it. So, because it's not so sticky and it dries really quickly, the problem would be no sooner were you ready to pour your embossing powder on it than the ink would be dry and the embossing powder wouldn't stick to it. So, um, let's clean up the happy birthday. So what I'm going to do is position my seahorse where I want him. Let's put him there. I'm going to pick up my stamp, remembering the embossing buddy, and particularly because I've stamped. Because if any of that ink is still even like just remotely damp, I don't want embossing powder sticking to that. Um, so I'm going to stamp it first with the colour. And this could be any colour. In this case, I'm using Night of Navy, so I'm using the nice navy blue. Stamped my seahorse. Stamp him on there. Lovely. Now, if I was to pour stamping uh, embossing powder over that, that ink's already dry. So it wouldn't stick or it wouldn't stick very well so you do need to clean your stamp in between here otherwise you'll end up contaminating your Versamark ink which is clear you now have a navy blue seahorse on it so it's quite important that you clean your stamp at that point just again going to go over it with the bossing buddy get the Versamark ink do one stamping and you know me, I like to do two. So I'm going to do the one. And then just go over it again. Okay. And you won't be able to see it, I don't think. But that's given me a good image there. I'm going to put the clear embossing on if I can find the clear one. So this way, I didn't need to have a navy blue embossing powder. All I needed was to stamp it with ink and then stamp it in exactly the same place again in the Versamark. And that looks pretty good to me. I'll just put this away. Now, because there's powder on there now, it kind of looks matte, but once it starts to melt, you'll see the colour of the ink come through because it's clear. So whatever colour you inked it with is the colour that you're going to get. And it's going to look just like if you'd have put navy blue embossing powder on. Hopefully you can see that changing, and it just looks amazing in in real life. I don't know how well it's going to show up on the video. Hopefully you can see how shiny that is. And you can see it change. So you can see when it's done. This bit of card is quite curled up. So I am going to just heat it a little bit from the back. And then that is my seahorse. I don't know how well this light will show that, but you can touch that now. You can you can paint on it. You can use the bleach technique that I did with the um, 
the flower basket yesterday so you could get some a paintbrush with bleach on and bleach it so that embossing is there's lots of techniques you can use with this emboss resist techniques and all sorts of other techniques this is just basic embossing i'm going through today but um there's so many different things you can do with it so that's that one i'm going to show you now the seahorse using the sticky embossing um so if i get another piece of this and let's stamp it up with our seaweed again let's put some seaweed in here and get our bubbles put some more bubbles in here and then this time i am not going to use a color i'm going to use clear because i don't need any color well when i say clear i'm going to use the versamark ink get our embossing buddy just make sure that I'm not going to get particles and embossing powder sticking where I don't want it to I already know my seahorse is in the right place because um, it's the same size bit of paper as I used before so I'm going to use my Versamark ink Use my first mark again. Now I am going to have to be quick with the next step. So what I need to do is I need to pour the sticky embossing powder over it so it's just like the other embossing powders, no different. The difference with this is when it heats and melts it's going to remain sticky for a little while and that's when i'm going to then put on this glitter that i've got this beautiful glitter um called brilliant blue it's by cosmic shimmer polished silk glitter it's called so i'm going to do the seahorse in some glitter right I'm just going to pop that to one side. Right, this is where I need to be fairly quick because once it's sticky, it, it's not going to stay sticky for long. It'll cool quickly. And so I quite quickly need to get that cosmic shimmer on. So let's warm up the heat gun. melt our powder there we go it's melting already melting quite quickly hopefully you can see that it looks wet at the moment then using my glitter I'm going to sprinkle glitter over them Let it cool. And then if I tap that off, and now I'm going to have glitter everywhere. But I can rub it away from the card or I can get a brush and brush it away from the card. Um, I need a thicker paintbrush. Let me just... Actually, let's just clear up some of this glitter and then I'll get a thicker paintbrush. Now, who doesn't like glitter and who doesn't like seahorses? <laughs> Oops. 
I love glitter, but I don't like it when it gets everywhere and makes a mess. Um, got some thicker paintbrushes here, which is probably a bit gentler than using my hand to brush it away. And um, where there was no sticky embossing powder, you should just be able to brush most of that glitter off so that it's just left with the seahorses. How beautiful is that? Pretty cool. So, um, so let's just recap then on what we've done. So we've done black on white. We've done clear on black. We've done black on black. We've done sticky embossing and the other seahorse using a pigment ink it kind of looks black i probably should have chosen a better color but i like the navy blue um but any color so you could just ink it up and then when you've finished inking it up clean your stamp stamp it again with the versa mark and then when you melt it it's going to be whatever color you had underneath so yeah i hope that gets you getting your heat gun out and trying this embossing you will fall in love with it see you later bye